when we met in Kieran Murphy's office, this was supposed to be for just a general friendly chat. But however, it turned out to be anything but just a friendly chat. This was, of course, to discuss principally the lost books, which are the 1993-94 books. However, uh, we didn't touch too much on them. We actually went in different areas. But the first thing that Kay Murphy opened up with was the loan that I got from the bank. She actually tried to tax me on it. I just couldn't believe this. I said, well, you know that Chris Urquhart put this into the account as being unmarked, as if it's just entered from nowhere. And she knew full well, because I'd been telling this in the previous months, I'd been showing Kay Murphy all Chris Urquhart's bad accounts. So she tried very hard to actually do me for uh, uh, tax upon it. I mean, can you imagine that? A bank loan and then getting taxed at around about a third from the inland revenue. It was absolutely horrendous. However, I pointed out that the bank sheets that she held at the time, which were the 93-94 bank sheets, it says on the bottom of the uh, bank sheets themselves, loan repayment. In other words, I had to pay each month, I think it was £246 back, or uh, I believe it was about a three-year period, to the bank. So it's quite clearly in there. However, very reluctantly she gave up on this. And then she started on the house at Crosby View that I'd just uh, sold. I'd pointed all the problems out that we'd had with the, um, you know, the refurbishment costs which weren't claimed for. There were £10,000 missing there and the cars and all the rest of it. And she just completely ignored it. And she went out of the room and came back and said, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Coates, but... Uh, you've got to pay capital gains on the house. I said, well, what about the refurbishment costs? She said, well, you haven't claimed them. I said, I know. That's why I sacked Chris Urquhart. And as this was going along, I kept looking over to her account and saying, well, are you going to help me with this? And he did absolutely nothing. He was just like smiling and just shrugging his shoulders. And I just couldn't believe what they were doing between them. And of course, I had nothing to sort of like uh, defend myself with because Urquhart had lost the books, so he said. And Kay Murphy held all the bank books at this time for the previous four, six months or whatever. Anyway, we, we uh, then moved, moved on to uh, friends and uh, I just couldn't believe what was happening. I was absolutely stunned. Here was a woman I thought was helping me and was um, looking at the problems that I had with her account with the, obviously the uh, unclaimed refurbishment costs and the cars and all the rest of it. I thought she was helping me, but far from helping me. She was helping herself. I just, I, I just cannot believe that somebody would have done this. And if you look at the uh, code of conduct that they actually should be following, she wasn't following them whatsoever. Anyway, I came round to the uh, house in uh, France, and um, she, she said that I couldn't ho open a hotel and jeeps over there, which was my intention with the house, with the uh, property over there, that the farm. In other words, I was extending my. Uh, let properties, you know, my houses which I had in England, I was basically going to France and doing the same thing. I was going to move there and actually uh, open into, like I say, a hotel jeep, some little riding centre, anything I could do to have another business over there. However, she said, I couldn't do this on the English system and I really couldn't understand this. Um, I was really confused and she kept quoting different um, uh, laws and what have you from the Inland Revenue, why I couldn't do it. And I, I thought, well, I can't understand why I can't. Anyway, eventually she said, well, look, Mr. Coates, you won't get done for capital gains on the house in France if you sign a document to say that this is your own private house. So off she goes again, brings out this other document. By this time, I'm totally confused. I didn't know what was happening. And I, I kept saying, there's something wrong here. I, I just can't understand this. So eventually I signed this document, which I'm quite uh, certain the Inland Revenue will never produce because it's the only document in existence that says that house in France was for my own private use. It never was. As I mentioned previously, I had to um, uh, sign other documents for the French government and for the Nautier to say what usage I was going to have for the farm. And the usage I was having for the farm, which I, I have evidence of this, which were the wholesale sheets, golf course, and one or two other things as well. So in other words, it never was. A private house and there was only one person that made it that way and it was Kay Murphy. So off she goes again, comes back in again and says, well Mr. Coach said, well I'm afraid that we're going to do you now for uh, claiming for 
repairs and works done to your private house in France. That, in other words, the workmen had taken over. There was very little anyway that had taken over because I couldn't afford anything at that time. As I mentioned, I was waiting for um, a Tessa to mature and I, I, I was only sort of like doing basic repairs. But she still said, well, you can be done uh, for taking men from England to repair your house in France. I said, but you know full well but it wasn't a private house. I've only had to sign this now because she threatened me with uh, doing me for capital gains on the house again, which she'd just done me on Crosby View. So I, I just couldn't believe how devious this woman was. So she had the paper in her hands to say that I'd actually just sign it to make it a private house again, <clears throat> which it wasn't. And she, then the next thing she's doing is turning around and saying, well, you're going to be done now for actually claiming uh, through your business for private works. I just thought, what an awful devious person this woman is. And I, I, it was like this all the way through. All the evidence that I'd given her uh, over the previous year, she was turning around now and using it against me. She knew full well I'd sat the account up for all these particular reasons. In the next clip, I'm going to show you my bank box. And you'll notice there's an awful lot of yellow highlighter marker there. Now, I went to this meeting with Chris Serka and uh, Kay Murphy with the intention, so I thought, of answering questions on principally the lost year book, which Chris Serka had lost on the 93-94 books. However, it was far from that. She went into great depth into my bank books. I was totally unprepared for this. And because I couldn't answer all the questions and all the entries in my bank box, the yellow highlighter markers here that you can see, I was done for. Now, after getting all my paperwork back from both Erka and uh, Mrs. Murphy, who held them, by the way, for the previous six months, I, I didn't even have this information at you know, my fingertips anyway, um, I managed to uh, find exactly what these entries were. Just imagine that you've got to, you go into an inspector's office and you're expected to answer questions over the last 20 years on every entry that you've ever put in your bank box without seeing your bank box or information for nearly a year. That's incredible.